Hi, my name is Mike Batten. I am an employee of uh, Western States Metal Roofing. Today we're going to discuss uh, the common panel, the Western Lock Standing Seam Panel with the head wall condition and a side wall condition. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. Use of the following video content is subject to the warning, disclaimer of warranties, and limitation of liability as set forth on this screen. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, we're going to attach the gable cleat or the rake to wall cleat the attachment so the panel that can go on the last panel can go on there. So keep in mind also we're in Arizona conditions in different states and different locations have different requirements. Um, please follow those the fashion schedule. It's uh, in Arizona we typically do a 12 inch on center. Now, now it's set, so now what we have to do is we have to make the last two panels, so the last panel will be a specialty panel that we'll have to make by hand with a WUCO, and then the, the first one's going to be a full panel, we'll have to notch the end and put a kick on the back of it so we can cock it before we put the Z-bar on. Alright, so what we did here is uh, we tab the one inch tab on our panel. We have a typical D style drip edge on the bottom that we hook the panels to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this, we're going to put the kick on the back of the panel right now. You just grab your handy tool right here to get that angle. Put it on your roof pitch to get your roof angle. So we put your T bevel here and we take it and we lock the angle in there and then we put it on our panel and we mark our panel each side like I already have marked right here. So after you mark your, mark your angle, you, what you want to do is you want to make sure you measure your panel, mark it on the end. You want a little, minimum of one inch and preferably inch and five eighths to go up the same height as the back of the panel. So now what we're going to do is now we're going to notch the panel to put it in place. Bend your tab down, trim it off. And I cut it at a slight angle just so it reliefs to tuck back into the panel without catching or scratching or scraping anything. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my Tusty Western States uh, Bendilator, which is what we call this. This tool is it's like a hand seamer, but on a better scale. And we're gonna tab down this panel to match the same angle. Make sure you get it matching it the best you can as it makes it easier for the application of putting caulking and sealing it watertight. All right, now that we're finished with that, we will be attaching the panel with the clips. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attach the panel to the existing panels and then we're gonna leave our last special WUCO panel that we have to make at the end. But right now we're gonna attach the 18 gauge UL rated clips Make sure that your fastener schedule says that you have to double clip the end of the panel. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's specs. What you do is you get it close to the end of the panel and then you can snap it in place. So we're gonna snap it into place. That's how you know you have a good engagement is the panel will actually snap into place. And then we take our hand and shove it up or a rubber mallet like I like to use. Now the panel is secured and tied against the top and attached to the head wall right here with very little glass. Now we have to measure the last panel to fit in here and this is the custom handmade WUCO panel that we will have to make. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure this last panel and hopefully it's not too tapered on me. So I got four and a quarter here and I got four and a four and three quarters here and I'll have to add an inch and a half up to the up legs for the panel to fit snug underneath the cleat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lay out our panel. We know that our panel is uh, four and a quarter plus an inch and a half. 
So I'm going to mark out the four and a quarter and mark an inch and a half. That's where my bend line is going to be at. So this is going to be my four and a quarter mark and this is going to be my up leg to go under my uh, rake to wall cleat. So I'm going to do the same to the back. I'm going to mark the four and a quarter and I'm going to add the inch and a half to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rake wall piece as a straight edge. That's my bend line. And this last one is going to be my cut line. So I got this old school um, Malco cutting tool. They have a similar one, but this one's really old. It's older than actually my kids. It's my favorite and I've kept it a very long time. So we're going to break it out for this special occasion. All right, so this is a Wuko Bender. This is the installer's favorite friend when it comes to having to make custom pieces on the job site. Z-bars, panels, custom, you name it, this is your best friend. This is an inch and a half, so I've already set it on the inch and a half setting on side of the Wuko. So we're going to flip it over because the bend is going to come up. All right, so we formed our last piece, we marked it all out, laid it all out. Everything's good, beveled on both ends, folded over on the front. It's going to be a tight fit because there's a little slight taper to it. All right, got a Carter pen extractor. It's a super tight fit. I want to run that along the edge so I can pull my panel over the clip. There you go. Once it's locked in place, it still has movement so you can take a rubber mallet on the front and tap it back. So what we're doing now is we're going to take this rake to wall piece, it's the end condition that we're going to put on top of the cleat, and what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the box cut on the end to close the end of the piece. So this is actually one inch, so all I have to do is mark a one inch and then notch it and then it will fit on there. So what we'll do is I'll mark our one inch, take our square. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this to where there's a flap and we box the end and put a rivet on the end. All right, so now we're going to cut our piece on the end. Make sure you're leaving a big enough tab to put a rivet through it. You don't want to cut too much off and not have nothing to screw to. But you do want to undersize it so it slides in there and it doesn't get stuck in the back. So what we're going to do is grab our flat seamers. And then we're going to tab the end and fold it. Some people nick it right here with a pair of snips. It helps the fold, make it clean and cut. Just be careful not to nick it too much or else it'll tear the piece off. And there you go. Easy as that. Nice boxed and clean. And then a rivet will go right here on top. Please remove the PVC first. Okay, so we measured this. It's 59 and uh, three quarters of an inch long. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the bottom to 59 and three quarters. And that's where we're going to make our mark right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our T-bevel and it already has the angle on it right here so then all we're going to do is follow that up. And there you go. So on this one right here, we're just going to cut on this mark right here. Um, on the rake to wall piece that's going to attach over the top is that's the part we're going to put our tab on.
There you go. Nice clean cut. Then after that, we're going to remove the PVC. Also, on this piece, it is scheduled faster and riveted faster. It is 12 inches on center. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the 12 inches on center now. That way I can pre-drill the holes and it makes the installation part of it that much faster. I'll usually start six inches off the end and go up. Center your rivets for symmetry. Standard 332nd rivet bit. I'm going to pre-drill my holes, keeping them in the center. And then I'm going to pre-drill the hole on the boxed end. And there you go. All right, so after you make all your, uh, your notches, your folds, your bends, and you get everything laid out the way you want to, and get your miter cut exact nice fit that you want, then we're going to attach this to the panel system. Slide it like so. Like I said, I like to pre-drill it. Make sure you're flush on the end of your seam right here. The way all pieces line up, make sure it's pushed all the way to the bottom of the panel. Once you're happy with everything the way it turned out, go ahead and fasten it in. Next, we will be putting the Z-bar right here before we do the head wall attachment right here. Right now, we're gonna get ready to attach the Z-bar to the panels to attach the head wall piece. So what I do um, on certain conditions, and we have a small thing, I didn't wanna break off the chalk line, make a mess everywhere. So what I typically would do is take a piece of the head wall, I would take it, put it where it's gonna overlap and connect on here, and I'll mark the top parts where my Z attachments need to be underneath. So right now, I'm gonna mark where my Z bar needs to attach on my piece, and then I'll remove this, and I will install my Z bar. Where we're at right now is we're getting ready to measure a head wall piece right now. Keep in mind it's typically a six inch overlap and I'm gonna put about an inch and a half turn on this backside right here. So I'm at 57 and a half inches to my lap mark. So that's where I'll make my cut and that'll account for the six inches plus I'll have to add an inch and a half or two inches of the runoff on this backside. All right, so right now I'm gonna measure out my 57 and a half and mark my tab on the other end. So right here, Got 57 and a half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this piece right here and leave this as my tab to fold it over going this direction. So this right here, we're gonna save this part right here and we're gonna trim this piece off. This part is where it terminates into the rake on the side wall profile. And we're gonna actually offset it about an eighth of an inch inset so all those pieces of metal allow them to pass and by each other and still give us nice tight fit. Make sure you cut a little bit of a bevel so that way when all these pieces slide together, they're not catching on any edge. And you can nick cut on the top part of it. It helps it fold cleaner and better and nice and sharp if you, that's what you desire. Then I'll take my hand seamers, start it here. And then you can always work it by hand or mash it in with a hammer. There you go. And actually, I need to cut a little bit of an angle on this part right here because it's sloped and it's gonna catch the groove where the riglet goes into later on. All right, so right here, I like to, after I cut and notch everything, I like to put the holes, pre-drill them. So that way I get my 12 inches on center correct. 
So I started six inches on the one, so I'll start six inches in and then 12 inches all the way down. There you go. Holes are pre-drilled and ready for installation. The favorite part is the caulking always. Uh, we always gotta remember that we caulk the back of the Z's down here and then we caulk the up the panel up leg also on the back side because that's where it's gonna drain the back side of the wall if it leaks. So what we'll do is we'll put caulking. Gonna put some ton of caulking in there. Don't be cheap with it. Fill all the voids up. So we're gonna, after we get done caulking it and make sure everything looks sealed up, we're gonna put the head wall trim in. Also, to get this behind the other piece, we're gonna loosen that up just a little bit so we can get this tab behind that, that way it sheds the water downhill. Make sure that you open up your hand with your five and one before you decide to put your caulking on everything. Make sure all your Z's are in there nice and tight before you put the final nail in the coffin. Putting our screws six inch or 12 inches on center. and then retighten this screw back up. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna put three rivets here on the caulking joint and then we're gonna put a rivet 12 inches on center on the, on the Z-bars, not through the panel leg. We don't wanna cause a leak to go through the panel leg, the mechanical seam itself, so we'll make sure that we're off to the one side or the other side on the attachment. So the Z-bar on top is an inch and a half wide, so we wanna make sure that we're in that inch and a half space. Start six inches, and then every foot after the fact. And then we'll put one right on the end for good measure to hold it up. Now we're doing our 12 inches on center. Make sure you're going through the Z-bar underneath. We just finished this roof panel layout. We finished the sidewall, the head wall details, and now we're going into the saw cut riglet, which is this profile right here. And for our version, we don't have a block wall mock-up to do, so what we did is we made an inset half inch plywood to recreate the saw cut effect of the riglet. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna show you how to run it, how to tab it and overlap it with a six inch overlap and tab it to make sure that the flow of the water goes down with the, with the panel profiles. All right, so what we have to do first to notch the end of this panel is we have to measure the depth. So this depth is an inch and a quarter offset. So we're gonna have to cut an inch and a quarter back off the face so we can fold it over. So what we're gonna do is mark the inside first, inch and a quarter on top, inch and a quarter on bottom. Then I'm gonna use my combination square I got in my drawer. So it's going to go to a zero point on the bottom. So we're gonna connect that point. And then we're gonna go from here to that point right there. And that's gonna be our tab. Get my green snips. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little bit of this meat on here to make a tab to fold over so that way I can put a rivet through the top. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit extra off that way it doesn't get bound up on the cut or when you fold it over. Nice clean cut. Then we're gonna take our flats, make sure they're tight, and we're gonna fold this up, boxing the end of this piece off. 
and I'll show you why we're boxing it off in just a minute. And there you go. Nice clean cut, nice bend for the end to cover it over so no bugs or birds get in there. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we know that our cut, our cut length is 59 and three quarters long. So we're still gonna come off the end and we actually have to add just a little bit. So I'm gonna make my mark right here. And also when you, to the end, we also have to add an inch and a quarter inset. So when we go, the saw cut piece goes an extra half inch plus the material thickness. So don't forget about that, how deep it's going into the saw cut. Okay, so we have our T-bevel and it's still at the same pitch as the roof. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our T-bevel to mark the angle of the piece. So this is the measurement off the T-bevel. I'm gonna do a 90 degree up so we know. And then we're gonna add an inch and a quarter to the piece. Inch and a quarter, it's gonna terminate right there. That's gonna be our tab going up right here that we need to leave on so it can go inside the sock cut. And then we're gonna finish this off by cutting this tab. And there you go. Also, before I forget, we still gotta do 12 inches on center on these pieces also. It's very important because of the condition that we have on this, this actually does stick out about three quarters of an inch on top, so I need to put neoprene washer pre-painted screws on the bottom edge to hold it in watertight. That way there's no leaks to it and it pins it in while the caulking is curing on the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I usually start off six inches and then 12 inches afterwards. Okay, so now that I marked my holes, I'm gonna pre-drill them. That way it's easier to get my concealers and my lines line up. Clean and smooth. And there you go. This one is laid out and finished and we're gonna put the first piece on. This one's gonna sit on top of the other one. Before we put on the piece that we cut previously with the box stand, what we're gonna do on this one is I'm gonna show you just a few inch cut for the tab against the wall, the rake wall side, and then we're gonna also make sure to mention that you have to have a six inch overlap with a connecting piece. So after this piece on top will be installed, you'll have to offset, make your notch at six inches and connect those pieces together. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make my square line and then make my tab so I have something to connect the other wall to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this piece off and I'm gonna leave this and I'm gonna remove this bottom kick on it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a reconnecting tab to connect on from the head wall to the rake wall. I'm gonna bevel it a little bit so nothing gets caught up in the corners. Same thing down here. And there you go, I have a tab right here. This tab, we're gonna use our flats. And there you go, nice clean tab for the end wall condition. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is that the top piece with the tab on the end, we're gonna cut a six inch uh, lap joint. So we're gonna cut the part of this kick off. So we need to measure out six inches. This is a six inch square, combination square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut part of that leg off at an angle, leaving part of it attached still. So you still have a tab.
to connect into the other piece. Five and one tool. Make sure you cut it back at a little bit of a bevel. That way when all your pieces are joining here that they're not getting snagged up in there and getting caught. It's really hard to work with it when the little fish hooks are on there. Now I'm going to close it just a little bit more so it looks nice. And there you have it your notch for a six inch lap. So on the adjacent piece that's connecting to this piece, you wanna make sure that you open up that hem really good and wide because you do not wanna get it stuck. So I use my five and one to open it up. Probably want at least about an eighth of an inch. So when everything works fine and dandy, It'll slide in just like butter. And that's a nice clean butt joint right there. All right, so we also don't want to forget that we have all these laps of material that are going here. We need to make sure that we're caulking as we're going. So this joint right here needs caulking right here. Needs caulking going up top. This has a, so this has a tiny bit of an open cell on top. So we're going to put the caulking about one inch off the bottom of this piece right here. That way this kick where we're putting the fasteners in will be set right into the caulking. All right, now once we have our caulking on, we're going to go ahead and put our piece of trim on. And there you go. It's sitting nice and I can feel the caulk sit right in the caulking right there. You can see through the holes that there's caulking behind it. So we're using Western States pre-painted fasteners with the neoprene washers. So we're putting on the final piece on the mock-up right here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do an inch above the line to inset the, the riglet. And then we're gonna glue the lap joint and then we're gonna put glue here, on here and on here. And where this piece is gonna sit over the top, you also need caulk on that. All right, and then, so we're getting ready to put this piece, box in goes on the bottom. So as the last piece, it's about an eighth inch off. So I'm gonna tap it the rest of the way, flushing it up and on the end. This tight cock joint, nice clean cut. And what we're gonna do afterwards, after we get this mounted in here, we're gonna stick a tool behind here, pull it front, and we're gonna put a screw right through the tab on both things, locking them all together. All right, so for the final one is what I do is I have this baby pry bar that you can buy at your local store. Stick it up underneath and pulls the face to the other face. And there you have it. Tight with caulking. So the final and finishing detail is to caulk the saw cut joint right here, which I'm about to do now with this ceiling right here. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.